to a burst of light in the sky that had to blaze across the political firmament and having served his purpose like a flare he had to die a momentary star a myth but say say was not a myth he was quite real as real as flesh and blood and sweat tears and death and what after all can be more real than death loneliness or solitude the desolation that must go hand in hand with dedication for if Ramon Magsaysay had been anything a compelling urgency to accomplish he had to rush he had to hurry on he must have known he, in this Ramon Magsaysay could not be denied he had a tryst, an engagement to fulfill at Mount Manunga. August 31st, 1907, in the little town of Iba Zambales, Ezequiel Magsaysay, blacksmith, paused from his work. His second child, a boy, was presented to him by his wife, Perfecta del Fierro. Baptized Ramon, the baby grew and was real in his parents' devout household. Full kites, or he gathered water from an old barrio well conquered forests with a slingshot. Ramon's family then moved north to the windswept town of Castillejos. Here he grew up and showed a particular talent for mechanical jobs. And using all four tasks, nervous that defenders used to shake. He did his job well at 1941. Shortly before the fall of Bataan, 
He joined Lieutenant Colonel Thorpe. Magsay Sai and his men led the American forces in the liberation of Zambales. On February 4th, 1945, he was appointed military governor of Zambales, majority in the political history of that province. As a congressman, he brought home the Rogers Bill for the veterans. In the countryside, the hooks had taken over. The people were poor, hungry, and discontented. They were ready for subversion. The farmers had turned the receptive ear to the siren song of the communists. President Quirino saw fit to appoint Magsaysay, then an obscure congressman from Zambales, to the extremely critical post of Secretary of National Defense on September 1st, 1950. What Magsaysay at Globe Magsay Sai captured William Pomeroy, one of the most the total disintegration of the dreaded hook Politburo. Long hungry hooks were now going back to peaceful land and new opportunities through his daring, world-famed Edcor program, where he guaranteed former hooks with legal ownership of the earth they had fenced and plowed, as he made possible their reclamation among their countrymen. This was in 1951, and 1951 was an election year. The people thought elections would mean the usual shameless vote buying and open violence, but they reckoned without Magsay Sai. Magsay Sai, by utilizing the army and every volunteer citizen group, kept the election clean. The popular mandate prevailed, giving the Philippines one of the most orderly, one of the most elections in its political history. By 1952, the pan had been. His name was mentioned everywhere people gathered to talk. Everyone said, if he runs for president in 1953, he would get my vote. The country needs him. No audience was too small. No barrio so insane to explain his mission. He went to every village, hurdling fences and jumping over puddles, crossing mountains and fording rivers. And everywhere he went, he told the people, put me in office and I will give you a government that is for you. Put me in office and I will drive out the crooks and the government. The people believed him. They believed him because he was their kind of man, not fancy talking politician full of promises, but empty of fulfillment. They believed him because in his disarming smile, his humility, his shyness, he was a convincing personality. The thundering chorus of cheers that swelled out from the crowd each time he joined them, walked with them, talked with them, was echoed in the roaring landslide of his opponent and swept him to Malacanang on a tidal wave of great expectations. From the low rumblings of dissatisfaction, now rose the voice of the people, promising, hopeful, RM's election was a victory, not so much for the mechanic from Zambales. This was a resounding personal victory of the people. Everyone will remember how RM tried the presidential chair for size. How proudly, and yet how humbly, he carried his head high. The date, December 30th, marking his inauguration when over the din of a million voices, words said in promise were drowned out by the nation's overwhelming joy in seeing him assume leadership of the country. I have been warned that too much is expected of this administration, that our people expect the impossible. For this young and vigorous nation of ours, it's really impossible. The legend that Kanyang would be open to the people. His age thought he was speaking. He had a friendly hand for poor and rich alike. Perhaps 
He clasped the poor man's hand a little longer. For them who had less in life, he vowed to give more in law. Upon assuming the presidency, R.M. embarked on a program that revolved around one basic beneficiary, the people. The country began seeing copious irrigation canals around their farms. He extended health services beyond provincial capitals. He brought medical attention to those in far-flung barriers, giving the people the benefits due but long denied them. Wherever three or four Nipa house to learn, he provided schools to teach them. And our tradition will be enough of them. Safe, pure water to drink. Too many thousands of people were dying because of gastrointestinal diseases caused by polluted water. Liberty wells have become a rallying cry in the barrio. The moving guiding hand was always perceptible. Our ends. He held the land to the landless, and now he was determined to fulfill that promise. Administration of social justice, from mere words in a political speech to actual implement. What exactly is social justice in our administration? Such was RM's magnetic leadership that Congress, even against its better judgment, passed the land tenure bill. Always the builder, the mechanic, R.M. interested himself in machines, but more part to come would be powering products in the fields of commerce, industry, and manufacturing. President Magsaysay's tenure... We are prepared to live up all our obligations under our mutual defense in the United States. The traditional friendship with the United States was maintained and associations with neighboring countries expanded and enhanced. This was Ramon Magsaysay, the president, revered, honored, respected. This was Ramon Magsaysay, the head of a simple well-knit family, loved, cherished, adored. But Magsaysay's most natural role, the role he loved best, and endeared him to the teeming millions in the countryside. At doong araw ng maliit inyong lingkod ay sumupa sa luneta na maglilingkod ng tapat at buong puso at kaluluwa sa bayan at lalong-laro na sa kapwa niyang maliliit. Ayan sa gisag na naisigaw ko at ay walang iba kung hindi. Yan simbolong yan, ang pagtulong at pagbuhat sa mga hihirap sa kababayan natin. Masses that made R.M. use the people's opinion as his guide post public actuations. The criterion, the scrutiny of the... R.M. had seen in his own parents' way of life the perfect example of humility that the great must assume if history is to judge him kindly and well. Their son is not with them anymore, but quite content. Their son had truly learned well. There were lessons taught in turn to Monico, the village bakya maker. Of course, I'll wear your bakya, even if I am president now. They are still the same feet, you know. Another simple and direct. The heartbeat of the nation whose advice was as important as a full-scale national referendum. Mang Mamerto, former hook commander, whom an active self-help project leader of the province. These were close integral parts of a nation that he was trying to build. Many were puzzled about why Magsaysay always insisted on going back to Manila the same day whenever he went out on his numberless official trips. Despite the lateness of the hour, the uncertainty of the weather, the danger of travel at night, he may suggest that perhaps he did so because he wanted to be with his family as much as possible. Ramon Magsaysay was a good family man. Not demonstrative, perhaps, or overly articulate about how much he loved his wife and children. 
but in every act of his was mirrored his deep affection for his family, his abiding concern for them. Luz filled his life completely. She was everything a man could ask for in a wife, and he was grateful. Time had begun running fast. RM was rushing. The tryst had to be kept at Mount Manunga. It was a tryst that began on the 16th of March, 1957. was just another presidential tour, speaking engagements that he had to make in several universities in Cebu. And Mount Manungal was in Cebu. Time was running short. A speeder for the youth of Cebu, a quick trip to another university, a word of advice to graduating students, gratitude for the conferment of academic honors. But already his eyes seemed to scan more distant horizons. A speech at San Carlos University, then a hasty farewell. Old and young, saying their goodbyes. A moment for plans that had to be ordered before the trip home. A parting conference with world neighbors. A kind but firm refusal to stay for the night. It was 10 minutes past one o'clock in the morning of Sunday, and RM was crossing the strip towards the plane, PAF 925. According to him, nothing else. Kung ito ang ikakamatay ng maliit ninyong lingkod at alipin na kibagsaysay, hindi baling mamatay ako dito sa panahon na ito. Magpakita ko lamang sa inyo. May pakita ko lamang sa inyo. A whole nation reeled in dismay, disbelief in its cruel reality. Ramon Magsaysay was dead. That is, his body was dead. There was no doubt about that. They had found his badly burnt shoe. They found a handkerchief, a watch, some headache pills. R.M., the man, was gone. The tryst had been kept. Still unbelieving, more than two million people turned out to meet the remains of the president. That one so dearly loved could have died so suddenly was incomprehensible. One had to see for himself. One had to touch the coffin to believe. And even then, how could a valiant heart be stuck or a beloved voice muted and still? I ran forward, moved back, stood still, or joined the ever-growing mass of humanity. There was no doubt. R.M.'s voice, ringing clear and true, must have echoed in their ears. Ang paglilingkod sa gobyerno ay hindi binibilang kung ilan taon. Kung hindi, kung anong nagawa mo sa bayan, yan ang dapat natin sukatin sa isang paglilingkod sa bayan. Maari maging apat na po. Maari ako apat na taon lang, mahal kong kababayan. Ngunit, mo lahat ang kaluluwa mo sa bayan. Kaling maglingkod sa bayan kung ikaw ang isipin mo. Magpapayaman, magpapatakbo ng hagat yan, numero uno ng auto. Ay ang mga naghihirap na mga tao, mga tao ang walang trabaho, mga tao ang nagugutom at ang dapat mong gawin sa bayan. Mamamatay ko sa inyo, gaya ng pagmamahal ko rin sa sarili kong pamilya at sarili kong mga anak. He rests in solitude, peace, tranquility, well-earned and deserved. Magsaysay walked in the glory of adulation, and he walked with the humblest, and each deemed him his own. RM will be remembered 